I'm deep in this. I'm there. Well, good evening and welcome to tonight's installment of Trending SA. Of course, it's a Friday, and you know what that means. Great entertainment. Check. Face beat to the gods. Check. <laughs> Amazing company. Check, 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 and check. <laughs> Joining our awesome threesome tonight is one of the best in the business. His name is Rob Forbes. He's an award-winning radio presenter on South Africa's most popular youth radio station, 5FM. Uh, this dynamic radio personality is opinionated, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, outspoken. And tonight, he shares some of his opinions with us. Welcome to Trending SA, Rob. It's so weird to have someone else welcome me to a show. It is, right? <laughs> it feels odd, right? Yeah. 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 Does it make you feel painfully uncomfortable when people go, lavish praise, yes. lavish praise? Desperately uncomfortable. Accepted, accepted. We'll take it in tonight. It's Friday. We'll take it in. The, ni okay. the nice thing is that I know that, you know that point in the show where we go, what's caught your eye this week? Yes. Today it's going to be great. I can't wait for it. But first, <laughs> first, 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 first. Yes, there was a video mm -hmm. that was... Pretty concerning, and it circulated not so long ago. Now, before we get into it, in case uh, you didn't see it, take a look at this. Now, okay, <laughs> on Wednesday, I saw tweets that Lebs' dad's behavior is under review by various social departments as well as the SAPS. This was bound to happen, guys. Um, now, the MEC for Social Development in Polokwane, Nkakareng Rakhwale, said, and I quote, the behavior displayed in this video is against the prescripts of the Children's Act number 38 of 2005, which citation. discourages all of us to expose children to harmful behavior. Well, there were obviously mixed reactions on social media. S underscore K underscore one underscore four <laughs> underscore. <laughs> you guys know how to choose this name. <laughs> Said that Lebs' dad got arrested, <laughs> but why would you take a video of yourself breaking the law? He didn't know he was breaking the law. And then uh, Umkele had this to say. Uh, Umkele says, I understand Lebs' dad. My dad taught us how to drive from the age of 12. Him and my mom traveled a lot, and they needed to know we wow. could get ourselves into <gasps> safety or ER in case of an emergency. And then Atabs went on to say, yes, it was irresponsible, but Papa Lebsa is a feminist icon, I believe that, for teaching a woman how to drive so that she's not 23 on Twitter and being dragged, dragged by OT for, for not having a license. Free Papa Lebsa. Guys, <laughs> guys. So, I don't have a problem with the kid learning how to drive. A lot of rural kids do. And if it's not on public road, you know. But mm. I guess what I'm asking is, the, just I don't want to get into, like, the young boys hanging out the windows yeah. and on the sunroof. Guys, Rob, what's your, what's your take on this? Because um, on one level, I'm like, I love how composed she is. Yes. But everything Yo, else freaks that me look out. Look on her face, though. She's just like... <laughs> I got this. I got. What are you talking about, Dad? I got this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you're completely right. But it's it's obviously very difficult when there are kids sitting on the roof of the car. That's not safe. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't safe. matter who is driving. Yeah. If there is a child on the roof of a exactly. moving car, this is a problem. The yeah. car was going at five kilometers an hour. I don't Have care. Have you ever fallen off a car at five, at five kilometers an hour? An hour. <laughs> Guys, you she... just thud on the floor, and that's it that happens to you. <laughs> the expression on her face said, and I will, I will translate mm. for you, I realise I might be really small, but I'm obviously the only adult here. <laughs> also, oh, oh, no. oh, Can I tell you something? If those kids fell off the car, and kids are very resilient, they can drop off at five kilometres an hour, just thud on the floor and get back up. No! Lebs's father is a martyr. We need fathers to <laughs> actually teach their daughters to drive. Right. Right. Yo, Rob, you're like... <laughs> I, I, I mean, unfortunately, Sam, I, I saw conversations with Papa Lebza, who was saying, um, you know, he didn't know he was breaking the law. Oh, what, Papa? And unfortunately, oh, what, Papa? like, that's not an excuse. No. We're not going to take it from our politicians. Yeah. They're like, oh, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to do Rob, this. Yeah. Like, if we're going to do it one way, we must do it the right way for everyone. Uh, unfortunately, Papa Lebza is going to be in trouble. I, I don't imagine he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Mm. 
Rob's like no one wants to see him I in jail. It be no, so one, no, but no, 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 no one wants to see him in prison. <laughs> no. Like that's not what we have. Anyway, but let's move on. Yeah. yeah. You MC, stop, stop uh, spoiling our jokes. We're having fun on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Kids on top of the roof. Yeah. So Ronji pictures for yourself or your partner is one thing. Ronji pictures <laughs> for attention is completely a different ballgame. So earlier in the week, talented rap. Uh, oh my gosh, we're speaking about this. <laughs> talented rapper and lyricist Shane Eagle shared this pic. Take a look. <sighs> Was the aubergine there? Can I tell you something? <laughs> I I woke up and I saw the unpg 13 the mm. 18 n l p q r s version of this yes it was vus hey that's the Afrikaans <laughs> word rob, it was vus it was it was just a uh, we... rob tell me he's not doing the lord's work i mean just <laughs> no, a splash of joy in our lives the only question we have is yeah. are we going to rename him shane ostrich or shane albatross <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question here. Yeah. It's Shane Ostrich for sure. <laughs> wow. It was, the thing is, I, I wasn't ready for it. So I woke up in the morning, and the, the first thing I do is I grab my phone, and then I refresh my mm -hmm. Twitter feed. You mustn't. And you then I just, and it was there. It just said, what's up, my player? I was like... The game crawled so that Sean Eagle could run. Yes. Did you just call him Sean Love Eagle? It. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Eagle he is right. definitely Sorry. not Sean, Sean Eagle. Sean could run. He's just doing the right thing. Guys, I, I, I don't know. I, I think we need to move on. Ma, I mean, can, you, can we please do this thing now where we go, Rob, what caught your eye this week? So we're not going to talk about no. long eagles. No. Okay. Let's no. talk about something else. Um, the one that caught my eye this week was that someone's throwing a party. Look at that premium package. 100,000 rand to go and visit the location undisclosed. <laughs> Who does this? Where are we going? What are we doing? We're mini golfing in Varambat for 100,000 rand a ticket. It's also not even a real photo. That's just like a graphic design. No, but this is it. And it's not like he's given you a lot of time. It's next week. What if he's taking you overseas and you need a passport wait, for your wait, yeah, That's wait, incredible. What's Imagine happening? sitting in front of your laptop, ne? <laughs> typing the P.O.P. Ne? for a Gmail account. <laughs> And imagine sending 100k. I, I want to see the disappointed tweets post this event. I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. What do you want for 100k? What do you, I, I, I mean, if you're putting that in? Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> a That's Rolls what I want. Delivered by offset. That's what I want for Is I there mean. somewhere in South Africa you would pay 100,000 Rand to have a party? No. Oh, we've had this conversation when no. we're discussing the tourism industry and what they're doing. I am not, I'm leaving. If I'm paying 100K, I want to go to Xing Changping and, uh, and, and I don't want to know anybody there. Nobody must speak English. What is this uh, place? Xing Changping. Where is this? I don't know. That's where I want to go. How long do you day. fly to go there? Do I you know? know? But it has to be more than 10 hours. Xing Changping. That's sure. what I'm okay. I feel like he just made that up. I, I, there, there is literally nowhere. <laughs> that I would be willing to pay 100,000 rand to go and visit. And the Bora, I'm sorry, Bora. I'm the sorry. Bora Bora? Bora. Uh, okay, Bora Bora, there's one. Yeah, Okay, Bora, you, Bora. But you picked like the coolest, most Bella, beautiful Bella. place in the world. Not that. Now you're talking. We are not mini golfing in Bella talking. Bella for 100,000 rand next week. That is not the... <laughs> Just tell us what we're going to do. Like, is it music? Is it theatre? Uh, Are we all going to... Do we you get a private jet we to don't keep know. afterwards? Right? Yes. Like, what's the, give, give us a little more than that. Does it come with an American passport? I love how I went to the whole country. You and me. Jesus. That's where I'm going. I feel like people are going to feel dragged by that country or whatever. <laughs> that Triggered. Is. But yes. Triggered is okay. the word. Um, Rob Forbes, yes. it has been so nice you, to it see you. It has been a pleasure. It, it, it was nice, actually. Let's do this more often. It. Yeah. And, and you must keep posting photos of how you do your radio show from home. I like the cats. Oh, dude. Cats because co-hosts win. I never want to go back to the studio ever again. An interview lets us dead. Uh, and yes. Tell us how that goes. No, look, we stand for Papa, but unfortunately, like... Rules is rules, we'll, we'll do what we can. I mean, okay. you know, that's, that's we'll do the best we can. Okay. Let's say you're a queen. No, yes. no, no, no. Stop encouraging this. Guys, <laughs> we're going to take a quick ad break so I can have a word with Mumble. When we come back, we are going to chat to South Africa's number one wheelchair tennis player, Hotato Montani. We'll see you now. See you now, now.
working from an experience. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Trending SA. Do not forget to get involved in the conversation. Use the, ta, the hashtag Zion3 to make your voice heard. Now, Khotata Monjane is one incredible woman. The Limpopo born tennis player is one of South Africa's most successful athletes born with a congenital birth defect. She had to amputate below the, her one knee, rather, at the age of 12. But of course, this did not stop Khotata from reaching for the stars. At the age of 20, she began her tennis career and she has never looked back. Today, she is uh, ranked at number one in South Africa and number seven in the world. Mm. Please help me welcome Khotata Monjane. Thanks so much much for your time. Thank you. Oh, I'm so ball. glad you're it. in the country for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> yeah, now, it's been a disaster. <laughs> oh, that's a, let's talk about, let's go back to the beginning, right? You, um, you made history by being the first South African woman in uh, South African woman, so that black South African woman rather, in Wimbledon, making us very proud, of course. Uh, and you've also spoken about how you came to tennis quite an advanced age. And that was because a teacher convinced you to try the sport out. That was a turning point in your life. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, I was a very active learner at school. You know, mm -hmm. I tried every activity offered at school. So I was just that kid when they'd be like, there's a new activity, they'd be like, ah, I'm first on the line, <laughs> you know? But when tennis came, I was in matric, so I wasn't so interested. Books, everyone is expecting mm. you to do better just because mm. you're doing well in sport. Now they'd be like, ha, ah, you are in matric now, you yeah. have to do well. So you can imagine the pressure by then. But then uh, I came to realize the reason they came straight to me it was simply because I was that active learner at school. And I still believe they felt like, I will represent them well. So okay. they sort of like, you know, ordered me to go and represent the school. And, you know, I took it up. When I, when I, when I got there, you know, other kids were playing so well. And I was just sitting at the corner, be like, ah, I can do this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this, I like that attitude. <laughs> you know, I was just watching from the corner and I started, you know, yeah, because I used to use both hands, you know, serve with the right, because everyone served with the right hand, you know, mm -hmm. so I thought, yeah, so I have to serve with my right because I'm left-handed. So play double hand, backhand, but today, you know, you can't do that in wheelchair mm -hmm. tennis because you'll be off balance. So just from watching, just from watching, you know, I learned fast and yeah. that's how I started dominating. You know, I won my first tournament in the country. I got 600 and I was like, hey, there's money here. I'm <laughs> 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 so I just started, oh, 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 oh. I mean, wheelchair tennis is the one because, you know, having to win 600 will give you just 600 by then. Mm, so I was just like, true. I'm going to stick with this because there's money. And, you know, when I'm thinking money, I got offered an opportunity to travel. I've been mm. playing sport, but, you know, I never got an opportunity to go anywhere. I was like, oh, traveling too. Uh, this, this is going to be nice. <laughs> <It's not that laughs> <bad>. <laughs> uh, I'll just chill around. So those things were just, you know, things that make me, you know, hang on to the sport Lovely. at the beginning. But I didn't know you can take it up as a career. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And mm. as far as careers go, we've all had wobbles in 2020. Unfortunately for pro sport, there was a, a quite a big gap in the middle of the year. Um, you know, tournaments being postponed. Uh, lots of time, I'm sure, as, a, as an athlete, where you're not sure what you're planning for, you're not sure what you're preparing for. Um, Roland Garros uh, presents itself and you go and participate there. But now, how do you prepare to get back into action after such a long layoff. Look, it was tough. Mm. It, it was tough. You know, just after lockdown itself, having to get back into training, I struggled quite a lot. Mm. I just felt like I can't play tennis anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. But you know, the good thing is I still had the fitness because I was, you know, doing a lot of homework workouts under mm -hmm. the lockdown. But you know, the, the technical part of the game, it, it was really tough to get the rhythm. Yeah, but uh, other than that, you know, those couple of months that I had, I had to skip US Open because sure. also I wasn't so not sure about the COVID in America. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after a successful tournament, I thought, you know, why not, you know, go try out Roland Garros, you know, yeah. so I took that chance. And talk about how did it feel to make the decision to skip the US Open? Because that meant also for us, we weren't representing the wheelchair event, you know. Ooh. I mean, we've got skin in the game now, all of us. I, I, <laughs> did, I, I didn't know I was the only wheelchair tennis player who represent you guys once. <laughs> 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 but you know that, that that was more of a you know a, a health 
and safety decision sure. for me. Mm. So I, I had to make that. It was still early in the days, you know. Mm. You don't know what's going on. And there were so many protests in, in the U.S. Yeah. by then, and specifically in New York. And the numbers also, they were not looking good. So for me, I just wanted them to trial one tournament and see if it's really safe for me to go out there. Sure. So, mm. so, sure. Kuta, so we, we have a lot of sports personalities come on the show, and they all sing the same song, the problem with funding mm. in women's sports. How has that been for you? What's your relationship with funding and funders? No, funding doesn't like anyone anyway. <laughs> as long as you're women in sport, funding doesn't like anyone. Mm. But you know what? I, 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 I have also those struggles, you know, having to go Wimbledon. You know, when I went to Wimbledon, I went to Wimbledon by myself because mm. I couldn't afford to take the coach and stuff like that. So the, the issue of funding is huge for every uh, athlete or women in sport in the country. Yeah. But, you know, f for me, I, I got lucky after making it to Wimbledon that, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, my the last agency sure. that was like mm. voluntary be like KG will be here to help you so optimized agency signed with me and you know today that's why I'm sitting here I can share with you that I managed to go to Roland Garros no problems because they try mm. they're working so hard to make sure that I'm being yeah. taken care of and I don't yeah. miss you know important tournaments so speaking of working hard to um, take care of you what is the ultimate goal what are you working towards what's team KG working towards <laughs> You know, winning a slam, a grand slam, is our biggest goal. And obviously, with Paralympics coming up, looking at to finish in the podium, you know. And I mean, we, we, we live in the world of possibilities. Also yeah. becoming number one in the world, you know. So get a dream big. So yeah. those are the goals. And just quickly, the person you look up to in tennis now that you are in the game... <laughs> you know, obviously, the, the Williams sisters, their, their, their history, you know, paved way for players like me, Naomi, Coco, you know, so they, they remain, you know, they're, they're our role models, you know, I still look up to them. And yeah, yeah as much as I bump into them in the locker rooms, but, you know, they, 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 they've paved way for, for me yeah. and the others. And, you know, I'll always, you know, look up to them. Kotato, we look forward to seeing you fly to higher, higher highs, and we're behind you 100%. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, <laughs> just like that, uh, we are going to take a short break. That hashtag is star on three on all our social media platforms. We're not done yet. And welcome back to Training SA. Our next guest is a really special one. Five Boy DML, Nigerian singer and songwriter, jumped onto the Nigerian music scene in 2018 with his breakthrough hit single, Jealous. Since then, he's released hit after hit, and he joins Training SA now to talk about music life and becoming one of Nigeria's rising stars. Welcome to Training SA, Five Boy. Thank you, guys. What's good, SA? <laughs> um, now, I'm sure you've heard this question asked so many times, but tell us about the name Fireboy. Where does it come from? Uh, nothing deep, really. Uh, it was just, just the name. Uh, it's just the name for me. Uh, it's, I, my, my name used to be DML, my stage name used to be DML. And then, you know, I sat down one day and I was like, I Googled up the, the, the name DML. Like, when you blow up, what do you want people to see? And then mm -hmm. what I saw, I was disappointed. It was some data manipulation, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like, ah, this is not what I want my legacy. So I just, you know, figured out that, okay, I needed to be brand and change my stage name. I decided Fireboy to, to just make it, you know. Now, Fireboy, the, the most past... solid brand name. Yeah, the past two years have been amazing for you. First, you entered the highly, highly competitive Nigerian music market, right? With your smash hit, Jealous. And then a year later, you release your debut album, and it's also incredible. We love it. When you were starting out, did you think that uh, your piece of the pie would actually be this big? Uh, well, I don't know. I, 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 all, I knew, all I knew was that uh, I needed to bring something different to the game if I wanted to blow up. So I, I figured that I needed to bring on something special. Mm -hmm. And what that special thing is for me is my lyricism. You know, Afrobeat is known for the vibes and the instruments and the, the beats and the energy. And I just figured out that, you know, I needed to bring my own spice. And I'm good with words. So I said, OK, this is not something that Afrobeat is known for. So let me just bring in my own beat. I mm -hmm. uh, figured out, okay, if I, if I did that, I think it would be something special, something big. So, yeah, pretty much knew that was 
Mm -hmm. So a little earlier this month, uh, one of your songs uh, was included on the FIFA 21 soundtrack. That's huge because obviously this takes you to yeah. um, audiences around the world and you're the only African artist included. Tell me about how that feels. Uh, well, first off, I, I want to correct that notion. It wasn't just me. Uh, alongside my brother's grandma, Bonaboy, uh, you know, so it, it wasn't just me. It was, it's huge for the culture. It's huge for, for Afrobeats. And it just shows that, you know, Afrobeats is actually going global. That's the dream of my own generation, you know. Uh, my uh, our big daddies and big mommies have done this before us, like I like to call them. They've done a lot and they've been doing a lot. And it's up to us to finish up what they start. And this is proof. This is proof that we're doing... It's not in vain. And what we're doing actually makes sense. And, you know, we're, we're doing great. And it's great for the culture. It's great for Afrobeat. Mm. It means that the world is listening. And Afrobeat is going to be, it's going to be there in a couple of years. It's going to be where we want it to be. And this is proof. Big ups to FIFA. Big ups to ESports. Everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, Fireboy, um, is, there an African, uh, is there a South African artist that you would love to collaborate with? Or maybe... Is there a South African song that's currently out right now that, that you've heard and you're like, you're not, I'd like to jump on this? Ah, uh, well, well, well. Uh, South Africa is a big industry, so I can't really pinpoint and say it to one name, you know. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I admire uh, Nasty C. I respect him a lot. Mm -hmm. He's a really talented artist. Casper uh, Nervous is one of my favorite rappers from Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this, there's the... Uh, Master KG is doing great, big one for the Absolutely. culture. Beautiful song, Jerusalem. Uh, uh, there's this song. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can categorize it as an African, African song, but you know it's a piano, so mm. it's uh, e wallet. Uh, mm -hmm. um, dominant feature in that's a jam right there. That's a beautiful <laughs> song. Beautiful song, a very beautiful song. Everyone is doing great. I can't really mention names. I'll just say everyone is doing great. And that's awesome. there are so many talents I'd love to work with, of course, in the future. You know, so mm -hmm. I can't really mention names. But these few names I've mentioned, I respect them a lot. You know. Okay, awesome. Well, it's great to hear you give props to uh, South African artists. And we are admiring your music all the way from here. Thank you so much for joining us on Training SA Fireboy. Thank you so much for having me, Kelly and Okay, <laughs> well, let's do this all over again next week. Same time, same wonderful channel, same beautiful people. Oh, it's wow, well, and you, and you, on the fourth seat, we need you to complete it. Um, have a lovely weekend, stay safe, and we'll see you Monday. Cheers. Oh.